We're going to remind ourselves of the laws for exponents that you learned in grade 9. And there is a space in your homework book in order to uh, make a note of the summary that we're going to do. Okay, so the laws of exponents. We first started off in grade 9 by learning what happens when we multiply powers with the same base. So for example, x to the m multiplied by x to the n. When we uh, multiply powers that have the same base, we add exponents. So the simplified uh, form of that will be x to the power of m plus n. So multiply powers with the same base, same base, we need to add the exponents. Okay, when we are dividing powers with the same base, we subtract the exponent. So that will be x to the m minus n. So when we divide powers with the same base, we need to subtract the exponents. Okay, when we raise a power to a power, so if we take x to the m as a power and we raise it to a further power, we multiply the exponent. So that will be x to the power of m times n. So when we're raising a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. Okay, and then there's a few definitions. So those are the laws. And then some definitions that we need to remind ourselves of. Any number to the power of 0 is 1. Doesn't matter what the base is. That base can be 1 million to the power of 0. The answer will still be 1. If we have a negative exponent, that is the same as the base in the reciprocal. In other words, you swap its position in the fraction with the positive exponent. And if that negative was in the denominator, we would make it positive by bringing it to the numerator. So that is a list of all of the um, laws and definitions for exponents that you've learned so far. So please pause the video here and make a note of that page. Okay, let's have a look at some examples where we use those laws. Number one, we need to simplify. And you will see that for the multiplication and division um, rules for exponents, they all, they both start off by talking about powers having the same base. So you can only use those rules if your powers have the same base. In this qu uh, question number one, we don't have the same base, but what we notice is that 4 and 16 are actually also powers of 2. So we can write them as powers of prime numbers. So we can rewrite 4 as being 2 to the power of 2, and we can rewrite 16 as being 2 to the power of 4. Now that we've got our bases the same, we just need to raise those powers to powers. So it'll be 2 to the 2n times 2 to the 2n times 2. The exponent there will be positive 1 divided by 2 to the 4n. Now that we have a same base of 2, if we start off with our first one, 2 to the 2n, we can add all the exponents where the bases are being multiplied, and we can subtract the exponent where the base is being divided. 2n plus 2n subtract 4n is, is 0, and so we're just left with 2 to the power of positive 1, and we have simplified that expression. In question 2, it's a little bit more complicated because each term in the numerator and denominator, or each um, numerator and denominator consists of more than one term. And as we know from our knowledge of fractions, our section on fractions that we've just finished, you cannot simplify fractions where there is more than one term in the numerator or the denominator. So we're going to need to factorize. Now, before we can factorize, 2 to the t minus 2 when we multiply powers with the same base, we added the exponents together. So we can go backwards from 2 to the power of t minus 2. We can say, right, that means we must have started off with 2 to the power of t multiplied by 2 to the power of negative 2. And simplified, that gave us 2 to the power of t minus 2. So we can apply the laws going in both directions. Where exponents are added, we can separate that into two bases that are the same being multiplied. 
In the denominator, 3 times 2t, I'm just going to rewrite that with a little dot instead of a multiplication sign, and minus 2 to the power of t. Now we can try and factorize. Here, in both the numerator and the denominator, we have a common factor. 2 to the power of t is common to both terms in the numerator, and it's common to both terms in the denominator. So we can take out 2 to the power of t as a common factor, leaves us with 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 2. In the denominator, take out 2 to the power of 2t, we left with 3 minus 1. 2 to the power of t divided by 2 to the power of t is positive 1, so that gets rid of that 2 to the t. 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 2 is the same as saying 1 minus um, a quarter, so we have 1 minus a quarter in the numerator, divided by 3 minus 1 is 2. 1 minus a quarter is 3 quarters, and 3 quarters divided by 2 is the same as saying 3 quarters multiplied by a half, and our final answer is 3 over 8. In your homework book, there are two more examples for you to try, so please pause the video and try those two examples. Okay, number one, we need to get all the bases to be powers of prime numbers. Five is already a prime number, so we can't um, break that down any further. Nine as a prime number can be written as three squared, and 15 as a prime number is three multiplied by five. We can now simplify those brackets. We need to multiply the two by both terms, so it will be three to the two x minus four, and here it will be 3 to the 2x minus 3 multiplied by 5 to the 2x minus 3. So we have a base of 5. 5 to the 2x minus 1 is being divided by 5 to the 2x minus 3. So we will subtract 2x minus 3. Remember that that changes the signs of both terms. Multiplied by 3 to the 2x minus 4. We're dividing it by 3 to the 2x minus 3. So we subtract 2x minus 3, which gives us negative 2x plus 3. So that gives us 5 squared times 3 to the power of 1. 5 squared times 3 to the power of 1. But your pardon, negative 1. Because negative 4 add 3 is negative 1. So that gives us 25 over 3 as our final answer. Okay, number 2. 9 to the x minus 1 over 3 to the x plus 1. This one is a little bit tricky. Start off in the same way. 9 to the power of x will be 3 to the power of 2x because it's 3 squared. And now there's nothing common. There's no common factor in the numerator or the denominator. And when you're factorizing, you always start off by checking for a common factor. And secondly, you look to see if anything is the difference of two squares. 3 to the 2x is actually a perfect square, and so is negative 1. So that will give us 3 to the x minus 1 times 3 to the x plus 1. The reason 3 to the 2x is a perfect square, if some of you are just a little bit lost with that step, is because if you separate it out, we must have started off with 3 to the x times 3 to the x, because when we multiply powers with the same base, we add the exponents, and x plus x is 2x. So that is why the square root of 3 to the 2x is just 3 to the x. We can now divide the like factors, and our final answer is 3 to the x minus 1.